Hello and welcome to the part 3 of our Introduction to Operations Research Lecture. Today, we will be talking about the graphical solution for linear programs. Let's begin. First, let's recall what a linear program is, or linear programming. LP, or linear programming, calls for optimizing, either maximizing or minimizing, a linear function of variables called the objective function, subject to a set of linear equalities and or inequalities called the constraints. This is an example of a linear program. Here, we have two variables, x and y, and we have the objective function, where we maximize z, which is equal to x plus 2y, and it is subject to a set of constraints, which are written here. So how do we solve linear programs? One of the easiest solution is the graphical solution or the graphical method. It is very easy and it only uses elementary mathematical operations. The drawback is that it only can solve simple case LPs, which in this case are two variables, but it can be extended at most only to three variable LPs. It is due to the fact that we can only draw two-dimensional Cartesian planes or even three-dimensional Cartesian planes. So how do we go about the graphical method? There are three easy steps. First, you graph the constraints. Then, you have to obtain the corner points of the feasible region. Then, you have to substitute the corner point values to the objective function, and then you'll have or you'll get the optimal solution. It would be very easy to have an example. So let's have one. Let's say, for example, we have this linear program where we have two variables, x1 and x2, and we want to maximize z, which is equal to x1 plus x2. It is subject to three different constraints, one being 3x sub 1 plus 5x sub 2 is less than or equal to 30. The other one would be 4x sub 1 minus 3x sub 2 is less than or equal to 12 and our non-negativity constraints, where x1 and x2 should be greater than or equal to 0. So let's try solving this with our graphical method. First, graph the constraints. Given our non-negativity constraints, we are pretty sure that our graph would only lie on our positive-positive plane, which means that x1 and x2 would only take positive values. So we show that over here. Then let's take our first constraint, 3x sub 1 plus 5x sub 2 is less than or equal to 30. First, first, what you have to do is to transform this to an equality, which means instead of less than or equal, we transform this to equal. So that would be 3x sub 1 plus 5x sub 2 is equal to 30. Then we have to graph this. We can use the intercept method. First, let's say x sub 1 is equal to 0. Let's substitute that to our constraint which means 3 times 0 plus 5x sub 2 is equal to 30. Then now, we would obtain x sub 2 would be equal to 6. So now we have our first point. Then let's say x sub 2 would be equal to 0. Let's substitute that again to our equation, and now we'll have x sub 1 be equal to 10. That will be our second point. Now with these two points, we can already graph our first constraint. We have our point 1 which lies on x sub 2 and point 2 which lies on x sub 1. Then since our constraint is less than or equal, it means that only the values below that particular line would be feasible. So everything above this line would not be feasible. So our shaded area over here will be the only area that will contain our solution. Then let's go with our second constraint. First, we have transformed this to an equality, so it will become 4x sub 1 minus 3x sub 2 is equal to 12, and then we do the intercept method. First, let x sub 1 be equal to 0, and we substitute this to our equation, and we have x sub 2, which is equal to negative 4. Then we let x sub 2 be equal to 0, and then when we substitute this to our equation, we get x sub 1 equal to 3. Then since we already have our two points, we can graph this again which is over here, point 1, which lies on the x sub 2, and point 2, which lies on x sub 1. Since our constraint is less than or equal, then only the area to the left of the line that we have graphed would be the visible area, which means only the gray shaded area would contain our optimal solution. Again, the shaded area is called the feasible region. This is the region which satisfies the problem's constraints and contains the optimal solution. 
Now, let's obtain the corner points of the feasible region. First, of course, these three corner points are very easy to obtain. The difficult one would be our corner point over here. And how do we obtain that? What we can do is take the two equations that intersect to create that corner point. Then, we're going to do the elimination method in order to get the value of our x1 and x2, or basically our corner point. So if you can recall the elimination method, first, you have to find the greatest common factor for elimination. Here, I want to eliminate variable x sub 2. And the greatest common factor for the coefficients of variable x sub 2 is 15. Thus, we can multiply 3 to equation 1 and 5 to equation 2, which will provide us with two new equations. 9x sub 1 plus 15x sub 2 is equal to 90, and 20x sub 1 minus 15x sub 2 is equal to 60. Now we have to add up these two equations, and our variable x sub 2 would be cancelled. Then we are left with our x sub 1, which would be 29x sub 1 is equal to 150. And solving that, we would have the value of 15.17 for x sub 1. When we substitute x sub 1 to our first equation, we will obtain the value of x sub 2, which would become now 2.90. And this would be our corner point. Then we proceed to our last step to get the optimal solution. What we have to do is to substitute our corner point values to our objective function. Let's try. First, we have the 0, 0 for x1 and x2. Of course, we get the value 0 for our z. Then for 0 and 6, we'll have the z value of 6. For 3 and 0, we'll have the objective function value of 3. And lastly, for our fourth corner point, we'll have 5.17 plus 2.90, which is now equal to 8.07. Then, since our linear program is maximization, we have to look for the greatest value among all of the z. And obviously, the greatest value is 8.07. Therefore, our optimal solution would be x sub 1 is equal to 5.17, and x sub 2 is equal to 2.90, and our objective function is equal to 8.07. That's how you do the graphical solution for two variable type linear programs. Here is one homework that you can do. Solve this linear program using the graphical solution method. So thank you very much for listening. Tune in for the part 4 of our Introduction to Operations Research Lecture. Have a great day.